It's hard, back-breaking work, labouring in the fields from dawn till dusk. They've just become literally a unit of work. The vast majority of people in this city, it was news to them that this city was even a, a city renowned for slavery and its links to the tobacco industry. You've got very well paid men in suits in Bristol who are at the top of the sort of tree of exploitation. Small scale farmers, very low bargaining power, very powerful industry and buyer on the other side, and they can only sell to that very powerful buyer. Isn't that not a slave? For centuries, Bristolians, the mercantile elite, were involved in what's called the triangular trade, taking manufactured goods from Bristol to the west coast of Africa. On arrival there, they would trade with the African elders and kings for human beings, who they would then transport across the Atlantic in what's known as the Middle Passage, an incredibly harrowing journey. You're talking about hundreds of human beings packed into quite small ships in spaces where they have little more than about two feet above them, crammed onto several decks, shackled. The sanitation was appalling. Diseases were rife. It must have been absolutely unthinkable. But after that period on board the ship, they eventually arrive at the plantation in the Americas, and there the, the ill treatment continues. tobacco plantations initially were relatively small, say seven to twelve labourers, some free, some enslaved. But as production gets bigger and bigger, you end up with bigger units, literally hundreds of people working on one farm. And that means suddenly each person is a less important part of the overall machine, and hence a lower price is put on their life and hence they will work them harder because it matters less. If you lose one enslaved person, you just replace them with another. So tobacco is literally grown in, as a crop in the American colonies and it's harvested, cut, and they don't do a lot more with it. They literally pack it into hogshead barrels, put it on the ships, and then it comes into Bristol. But then as the 18th and 19th century progress, we start seeing the growth of bigger commercial enterprises. The Wills family come from Salisbury to Bristol and they start out with a small tobacconist shop in Bristol. But then that grows from there, becomes the biggest tobacco business in the country. The story is that 
Bristol was just full of bonded warehouses because they couldn't cope with the amount of tobacco coming in. There were not only the three big ones here, there were bonded warehouses in Baldwin Street, in Winterstoke Road, and there was just masses of it all waiting to go into the machines and churn out more and more cigarettes. And I suspect the links with anything that was going on abroad were little known in Bristol. I think there are two misconceptions about the Wills family. One is that they were slave traders and slave owners. The other is that they weren't involved in the slave trade at all. The fact is, they were complicit in the slave trade in that the tobacco that they acquired came from slave-produced labour. And while that finished in 1865, it continued in a form after that. So indentured servants were often brought in to work um, on a lot of the plantations, taking the place of the enslaved. Or often you'll also end up with the enslaved people basically continuing to work on the same land, doing the same job, working for the same people for very little money. And this becomes slavery by another name. So yes, they're technically free, but in reality have very little freedom and are doing the same tough backbreaking labour. But also, it moves elsewhere. So it moves out of the British possessions into, say, parts of Africa, where the same regulations don't apply. So they can keep slavery-like practices, but not fall foul of the rules. Tobacco was introduced in Africa as early as 1902, and uh, most of the tobacco companies that we know today um, first came into Africa at that time. In the 1930s, many of the colonial masters uh, brought in these tobacco companies uh, to basically investigate whether tobacco could be grown in Africa. But large-scale or widespread tobacco farming, in terms of in a commercial sense, would have started in the 1960s, and by this time, most African countries had gained independence. African governments were ideally looking for a crop that would have high commercial value and be able to generate a good income for a lot of African farmers. And so initially, the African governments actively promoted tobacco farming and would have um, extension officers. It would be part of government uh, crops to be promoted and that ran on until about the 80s and 90s, when due to the effects of structural adjustment and uh, cutting back on funding, tobacco growing and promoting of tobacco growing fell to the tobacco industry. And it's around that time that you find a lot of laws were passed around um, tobacco marketing. And so in essence then governments pulled out of either promoting the farming or supporting the farmers and uh, left them to the masses of the tobacco industry. The <laughs> Fodia, meaning a woman in the bureau, a woman who could be a little bit of 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 a little
zimene zikubanga tsa kuti arimi asama pese pindu kwa ile yosonga ndi mulangizi zikumande khotsa kuti ndiro yose bedu kwathandizira sikone ka kuti kupindula fwati onena kuti anza thabedu kwathandizawa sakupanga pindu Ineyo ndine James Sabwe, mm, ndi macho ninachokera kuzomba. Kuno kumpoto ndina bwera 1988. Ndina bwera ndi cholinga chogwira nchito ya ticket. Nditakula nagana ndazo pesa mbanja. Ndi ndi banja, ndi ndi ana 4. Leo kuli mafoja namba 2004. Ndi malima, Ford ya chimanga. Eh, so ya komaso mteza. Komano kumene ni maembekezera kuti ningathe kupesa ko phindu ndi kulimwa Fodia. Fodia mena kukhalira kwa ine monga mulimi sindikona po phindu ndi nali lose. Chifukwa mwachisazo muone nyumba yanga i. Monga mena ndakonesera ni nyumba ya ine i. Ndikulepera ni mpando mu nyumba. Ndondobe ku mene yabwira ndi makampani ya Fodia. Ndone na kuti Munga wina kuti atenge ngombole. Kwanga kale munga tapesika kuti ali ndi kuthekera kwaika kuti afuna ali mefoja ali ndi kapitolo yake. Makampani akumakana chifuwa kumalimba anthu amene atenga okha ngombole. Munga amene wazithandiza yekha amene ali ndi kapitolo yekha kuti ali mepaika. Ngati satenga ngombole yao ndi kuti sakatsaka tawunukula pa contract. Zimene zikutatha kuti mwanjira ina Makampani akukaka meza munthu kutarenge chani ngombole. Chifoko kapo kapo watenga ngombole ndiwa mene mutuja akuloledwa kuti akapoletsa. Inaindi nene ni kanda wile wamu zema chemisa ni namba kuli mafonya nanti nanti foro nti wa baki nde pamoja na vo pana vya zikano timu thoma panga makilabu nene na limos wana na wudi na siria na onoda mene wune na adhan chuo mla ni sondi ya sekuli mafonya nde namba wia sekuli mafonya kuzela makilabu na panga kila mwa anga kena kuna mpana chanti kutoroka. Ita tulo kwa nambara ija na zari mafoja ndi kuntu miza kwa nambara yanga ija Kena kwa basi nita tumiza foja uja kwa nazepe za kakoni na kuna kutu nda kolora Ndi wana nenda ame mene na disalira nita tumiza kwa kusho ni nino nota nda ya masiku kwa nilai Nda nota kwa wati nyo mkutu mfuti kila federes ya mbani kutenga ngongole Nde na zambadi ni kutenga ngongole kulimpe kutu ndizipe za kuhani ndizipe ndipe za kufederes Kuda cha afu ya kodi tu matia upanda fedha za wamtuiri nte tenga ngongole ija kubwa ezan na zamu ezan te kubwa ngongole ija na zamu zaona nesi na sare sundi kambi. ndine prince makamo mwa chibisa muno naye mba ulimi wanga mu 1984 ndiye kukhala khala muja naona kuti ah sindi kupindula nalo wa contract muri mberifi muri mberifi na kharamo na kharamo na choka tinapita kwa alliance 1 kwa alliance 1 nda kharako eh tinapita kumene coach kwa choti amakungu za fete za wambiri ndipo so ndizina ndizina koma tunaona kuti zimene zo zili bependo chifukwa siti matenga pondarama nane ndikusiria kuenda panjinga ya moto mandiona mene ndili ndi chochi sindi kukhala mwa ujeni yai amango dipanga nkhaza iyi ndi nkhaza chifukwa iwo ukapitisa ford ya uja ukamaliza ngongole kuti ford ya wina azapiteso 
pamatenga nthawe amakuresa kuti ya tiambeta thana ndi amene ari ndi ngongori inu mudzikire kai eh mene ndi ndi nawe yambira prophet ina ile sisindi kuiona ai chifukwa tika tumiza foto ya kumsika mitengo ikumakhala yo sika kwambiri chifukwa tika lima foja tika pita nao kumsika zima onesa ngari kuti foto ya timango pereka kuchako siti magulisaka kwacha mitengo yosika kuma chimandi dabwisa inayo sichi nayo ma akulu akulu mabwana okumeneko akuma endera magali moto dula okaoka I'm Dave's daughter. I was born in 1953. I should be very quite frank here. I will not hide my words and I will not miss my words. I used to grow tobacco on large scale. I had at a certain time 10 tenants. I would produce 120 bales of tobacco, each weighing over 100 kilograms. But I left. Why? It happened to me that when I sold my tobacco, what I realized was less than what I had spent. So at, I was unable to pay my tenants, and my tenants were on my neck. People would say, no, we're going to grab your, your luggages. We'll take your chairs, we'll take your screen, we'll take your what, 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 just because you owe us money. Yes, they were right, but what else could I do? Zimene zikuwa ni chakuti anzatu ugula Akanaribe ni mpavwe iku Imene ama Unitese hapi urichina jiri yose Chiteke Mpavwe kanaribu nitu Kwa antu ugula foe Ngakari mwondondo nego ya Makontrat Tawu zina pawa peseka kuti Makaku yena Sizo ni atsegedo Kuma makontrat daja Makampa na foe ya kubanga mwena Nkati mwa sizo Chifajwa di uwa Ndaminari ni mpavwe ya uramuli Kwa kutine ni kufuna ifeji chiteke Ndi chakuti chakuti so as that family are going to carry on their great, we must have one side of their great. If we just go to the bar in the night, you are going to carry on their great. Go to the bar in the night, we must have one side of their great. It's not easy. Ine munda anga foja ndi okula wano anda hafweka. Kumachifoti ndi nenzimai kuti ndi lime ndi kwa nisebu inobu ino uma ndi kanika. Nde motelo ni mapeza kumwa iwa wana mama wa wana wanda hapa skuru. Nde ni matenga wana aja mama wa ndi mwina kumisa ya mwina ten, mwina five, mwina wana fifteen, kena wakazibita kusukuru. Haka jukasa kusukuru kuja mazuro ama mwela aso zendi tandiza kulima. Kwa mwendi kuzio una dismenzi ya sizaku ino ifoda alangisa matuza. Kuna watu muga mali ma foja i, foja ndo waka nisidwa. Nde ana muga mali kisa nchilo ya foja, sija bu ino ikuta ana muga mali kisa nchilo ya foja. Nde di mangu wa kukulisa na jamobe la kutina ngandipa nga buanji, mtu ne munda mtu wa ukuru nde kasindi kwa nisi. Nde di mangu kukulisa nchilo ya na jamobe la jabe kuma nangizama tuza utosa kukulisa na nchito. Kuma nima tanizika ndi ana, chifo watu munda mtu wa ukuru pande kasindi nga kwa nisi. Tika pita kuna saliwa, kuma karaso, zama nkwara izi. Ana amati tandiza kukwira nchito iji. Kwa huma, mwangozi, timaza peze kasa kuti ana aja, adiga mangwara kuja, afaso. Mwina kutirila, akukwaso mchisimi, mwana kufu. Zose, zima kara ngozi, zima kara ngati ngodi, ngozi za chilengedwe. Kwa masi, zima kara za chilengedwe, tima chita kuzipanga. Ana, pena mbali nabi, amenua utata ndizirebo, kundi nchito dina timenetu kuchitika kwa kuwamu. Majitazo, amata kumanga wondindi, Kumaso bena kusoka kumene, kumano mwina kumakala mwina kantawe kwa chepe. Nde, chifuwa ni mwina zikana nindati chikaridwe jatu. Ni chifuwa ya ke mwina, ana kumabizika bikuli, haka nakwila bea chito ya meneja. Maka maka kwa za atu wa mene, ama lindiba chito, yota kwile ngadi matenanti. Kumabe, ma ndondome kuzwili statu uzi kuchitika kwa uzo tanditi la kuti nchito lumene wana, ukaringa kutu watani, watiratu, usabiti lileso. In Malawi, we produce our tobacco manually. We don't use uh, machinery, no. We use our strength. 
cultivating using hoes. Tenants come with their families. They don't leave their families behind. They bring their families, kids. They say, the children are ours, let them help us. So we see young kids, very young, at the age of 9, 10, 12, cultivating in the field of tobacco. These children want to go to school because they're always tired. They're always tired. We may send them to school, they go to school, they, as they come back, we say, let's go to the field. What are we doing? We're killing the future of the children. So, but the business is the zero, what it's we hear, is many is on the Pamina is my lavuti, a dwelling deep too. Molimoa forja, the Gamalima forja vaja, Pama Bezano noted to go chora for yawj. For your jadinan did you so always in a cafe, or Sazawa noted Ali Dimazin Dainaki. Kumadina zamba kuhusi duwa kwa nina kuti mufoja. Muli matenda, amino nina kuti tika machola paja, ofu ni katizi vara zintu za zitali manja. Kumamalu mwani na kuti siti mape zama opindu kuti tibiaza zo vara zimene zija kuti ndaya uchola jatizi kati kufara, tima kati libe. Ndaya tima titi kaduara, ndaya zina, tima ngo tata duara, mwine ndi marungu. Kupita kushipata alama nina kutia hai, amine wa sima rungu. Nda unautia hai, zimene zizi, muzilo nkwa utimaka, utimaka rungu soo minumene uja, utima chola foja. Nda kana unuma chola foja, nda uti ni matenda jani ya foja aje. Nda izina mwina kutika ni hatiti samali mefoja amine uyu, zimene zi ya buwesutu kumana nasu. When it comes to Malawi and looking at the trends and the parallels with slavery, I will say that the current tobacco farming practices are actually enhancing uh, slavery. The farmers are not aware of, or they have limited uh, awareness of the cost of production. They are restricted into who they sell to they are also being clearly exploited by the multinationals. They live in Malawi's price in dollars, which is ridiculous because the farmers don't buy anything in dollars within Malawi. We are talking about large multinationals. Imperial Tobacco repatriates a lot of the profit back to the UK. So the profit is not even remaining in Malawi. So we have got a dangerous crop it's harming the environment, it's harming the farmers. The farmers are not making an income. Malawi is not making an income so that a company that's in the UK can make an income.
Maybe what people will find quite interesting is that one of the largest tobacco companies in the world is based right here in Bristol. I talk about out of sight, out of mind, because as huge a company as it is, it does not engage with the wider city. When people think of slavery, we think of something that was abolished 200 years ago. But actually, slavery is happening here and now. What we see with the tobacco industry in Africa is the colonial legacy continues. You've got very well-paid men in suits in Bristol who are at the top of the sort of tree of exploitation. These are colonial companies. It's imperial brands by name and imperial brands by nature. So we look at these big companies, they're still competing with each other in exactly the same way. They're still seeking to expand their production, make it as cheap as possible. And of course, in exactly the same way it did in the early modern Atlantic economy, a lot of that burden falls on the workers. They have to work them harder, they have to get them to produce things more efficiently. And because so much of this is out of sight, out of mind, it's in different parts of the world, away from the management of the company, away from the consumers, we have that cognitive dissonance, and hence we're prepared to tolerate doing things to the workforce that we wouldn't tolerate elsewhere. In Malawi, in the tobacco sector, I see the current slave-like conditions continuing. It is therefore important for the government to put up legal and administrative mechanisms to ensure that farmers' interest and income is safeguarded. Otherwise, it will be many years before the farmers are liberated from the yoke of tobacco growing. In Africa, we moved from colonialism to independence but we still have neocolonialism and slavery. And so whereas we changed a colonial master, we have now changed it to large multinationals, tobacco companies that are enslaving poor African farmers. And so when we go to a country like Malawi, full of small scale farmers, supposedly growing a cash crop called tobacco that leads to poverty. Poverty at the household level, poverty at a national level. And so we've got people who've got very low bargaining power, who are not making a profit out of a crop that takes a large amount of labor hours, and eventually it is translating into a country that is not developing. This is a new form of slavery in Africa. Mavogena <laughs> Chimanga. I mean, I'm a bit drawn to Fodia, the NRK, I'm a contract. Not if you are. The Kumbaria Nawanga, a Dima Ganiza would decide, Sibu Nuda, as I was saying, in Dadusa. I command Dima Petagadam team at Fua, Dino Sauk, Pafunicana Fizi, Sogolok. Nanga, 